Hello and welcome to study introduction to early childhood education. So I'm Sajivani Vandekun, observing and assessing young children, topic six. Oh, well, learning outcomes describe the importance of assessment and observation, describe several components of assessment methods, list the steps for conducting observation, discuss the different types of assessment for children with disabilities, discuss the critical assessment issues. Let's look at the introduction. Uh, have you ever tried teaching in school without any form of assessment? Uh, it is just like trying to drive without any headlights. So assessment is like a tool that uh, can measure and inform uh, that uh, what your child can or cannot do. So that's the reason we do uh, assessment. Actually, assessment is an integral part of early childhood program, uh, which helps teachers to better understanding, understand the children and better plan instructions uh, that are individualized and developmentally appropriate. So that's the reason we do assessments. Well, when it comes to good assessment practices, assume an understanding of children development and knowledge of observation and assessment techniques. Oh, well, let's look at assessment and its purpose. Actually, assessment itself is a term that has been defined in many ways. If you look at uh, according to the according to the Himstra NCC coin 1990, uh, it says like assessment is a systematic and organized method used to collect and analyze information, uh, which is taken uh, for the objective of improving uh, learning development. Uh, actually, the teachers need assessment information uh, when they are planning instructions uh, for teaching and learning and also to inform parents concerning the progress of their child. And uh, well, it is important as it could help parents to assist their child at home. Uh, uh, finally, the objective of assessment is uh, it is the benefit, I mean, uh, benefit children, it benefit the children. Uh, well, uh, a valid and reliable test is needed to see if the curriculum is meeting the needs of children also. In addition to it, some programs uh, are assessment uh, for the diagnosis of the disabilities or developmental uh, delays. Uh, what is why it is happening? I mean, like what are the dis why disabilities and uh, what is the de delay of this development? So according to Marion in 2009, uh, has given a list of aims of assessment for children, uh, such as families, early childhood programs, early childhood teachers, and the public as, uh, uh, which you can see below. Okay, these are the purpose of assessment, like uh, this is a target group. Uh, well, uh, in the second column, it talks about the purpose of assessment. Like when you take the children to identify, uh, to identify prior knowledge and understanding, uh, the next one to identify their special needs and also to determine the appropriate placement of refer to appropriate services. Uh, when you take about the families uh, to provide information on children's programs, like to also relate school activities to home experiences. Also, I mean, like collaboration between the teachers and the parents. So that is why we have uh, in contact. And when it comes to the teachers to inform lesson and activity plan and establish goals, also to create new arrangement in classrooms, uh, to assist in selecting appropriate materials, to improve teaching and learning process. Early childhood programs comes to a uh, group instructions according to the children's abilities. Uh, well, uh, the public come uh, to assist establishing appropriate policies, to assist quality of programs, to ensure curriculum is relevant to children, to monitor children acumens, to provide useful statistical information, also to provide uh, as a uh, basic of public policies. So these are the purposes like uh, for assessment. Let's talk about the formal assessment. Well, uh, when you come to formal assessment, actually uh, it uses standardized tests. Like, you know, uh, well, formal normally uh, it is so fall into the following. Like you can say, uh, you can take one as acumen test, Readiness test, development screening test, uh, well, the other one is the intelligence test and also the diagnosis test. Uh, when it comes to the informal assessment, uh, well, uh, is the opposite of formal assessment and it does not rely on a standardized test, uh, but rather on observation 
and work samples that are continuously done. I also focus on the child's performance, uh, learning process, and also the product pursued all, all over a selected period of time and in a, a variety of contexts. Uh, the other thing is authentic assessment. Uh, well, authentic assessment actually measures children's actual learning and actually uh, activities uh, in which they are involved in. Uh, well, according to Cathy Grace, uh, in her article, Assessing Young Chil uh, Children, it's in Grace 2001, authentic assessment is concept that shows that students are given the opportunity to apply their knowledge and skills as they are normally being used in the real world outside of school. Let's talk about the characteristic of authentic assessment. Actually, uh, the, the, the list of the characteristics of an authentic assessment, you can look here. It is an assessment that is ongoing throughout the whole school year. All areas of development are assessed uh, rather than only a narrow set of skills. Uh, well, uses multiple ways to assess children as a human on what they know and able to do. Uh, it assess children work using sample, work sample, portfolios, performances, uh, projects, also journals, experiments and teach observation. Uh, it is a part of a everyday uh, learning activities and process that occurs daily in the classroom as well. Uh, curriculum embedded where the children are assessed only uh, what they are actually learning and, and doing. Also, it's taking into account uh, every child's development, uh, social, social or cultural and language stages and other needs as children uh, matures at different rate, it's differently. Well, it is a cooperative process that involves children, teachers, parents and other professionals. The goal is to make uh, assessment child, actually it is child centered. Let's look at some guidelines of authentic assessment, okay? Uh, well, uh, the guideline is to actually to carry out authentic assessment, like access, assess children based on their work. I mean, use work sample, exhibition performance, learning logs, journal projects, also protest presentations, experiments and teach observation. So assess children based on what they are actually doing and through the curriculum. So assess what each individual child can do or already learn or rather than comparing one child with another or one group of children with another. So this is not like not necessary. When you assess, uh, you can do it individually and do, I mean, like what they have already learned. I mean, rather than you are comparing. Okay, so make assessment part of the learning process. Encourage children to show what they know through uh, presentations and participations, like through uh, when you ask them to do some activities, like through presentations, they would, we can see like, you know, or we can understand like, uh, I mean, like uh, uh, you can assess the child. Okay, so learning about the child as a whole, make the assessment process an opportunity to learn more than just a child uh, acquisition of a narrow set of skills. Uh, well, uh, the other thing, involve children and parents in a cooperative and collaborative assessment process. So authentic assessment is uh, child-centered, actually it is child-centered. Well, uh, providing ongoing assessment over the entire year, assess children continually throughout the year, not just at the end of a grading period or at the end of the year. Uh, well, uh, it's used uh, developmentally appropriate assessments and techniques. So assessment procedures are most authentic and results are most accurate. So when assessments and techniques are develop, uh, developmentally appropriate. Look at some methods of authentic assessment. Okay, observation, anecdotal, running record, event sampling, time sampling, rafting scale, checklist, work sample, portfolio, and interviews. These are the methods of authentic assessment. So observation and its purpose. Okay, let's look at what it is. Observation is actually a very useful, I mean like to understanding, uh, it is a vital tool that can be used to investigate children as individuals. I mean like uh, by looking at you can, uh, uh, you can uh, understand like you know, uh, about this child. So during the observation, um, teachers would not uh, need to observe children action, expressions, gestures and observation and listen to their talk and interjections. And also sometimes teachers would need to join 
uh, I mean like uh, join in children play or conversation and ask uh, or respond to the question so likewise uh, the, uh, the I mean like when it comes to the during the conversation observation teacher I mean like teacher need to observe child in child uh, I mean like child's accent like the way behaviors and how he expresses and your the gestures and also the behaviors and also uh, I mean like we have to listen to I mean like uh, talk and interaction like how they interact with others also and also the cho I mean like a way of joining and uh, playing and like when they are playing uh, conversation and response to, to the questions kind of a thing that is what you call as observation so we need uh, in, uh, I mean like also an inter inter intention and systematic act of looking at children's behavior in a particular setting program or situation so the actually the understanding of main purpose of assessment uh, which help teachers to uh, to determine like you know what kind of assessment would be most appropriate so likewise you can you really can understand so determine to determine progress on significant development activity acumens also to decide placement or promotion decisions in schools to understand it and determine learning and teaching problems to help instructions and curriculum decisions to serve as a basis of reporting to parents and to assist a child with assessing his or her own progress. So when you look at all these uh, uh, sentences, you really can, uh, I mean, uh, understand how to assess a child. I mean, the reason when you do like this, uh, what will be happening at the end, it's kind of. So there are also many advantages on an intentionally and a systematic observation, I mean, such as provide opportunities for learners, teachers to look for information from other sources. I mean, uh, like other thing, it is more appropriate as children learn naturally through play. Also, uh, uh, reveals a lot of children uh, pro-social development and peer interaction. Uh, it is useful when children refuse to uh, respond, uh, provide a good mode of assessment of what children are developmentally able to do. Also, it is useful to assess children's performance over time. And uh, it provides concrete information uh, that could be used as evidence during conference, uh, co conferencing with parents. Uh, let's look at steps for conducting observation, right? There are four steps for conducting uh, well, observation as you, uh, as teachers, like, okay, the first one you can take plan for observation. And the second one you can conduct the observation. And also third one you interpret the data by looking at whatever you get. And also after that, what you have to do is once you have interpreted the data, you implement a plan for a certain thing. So assessment of children with disabilities. So let me talk. Assessment is uh, uh, in early childhood setting also important to determining delay or learning problems in children. Sometimes some students uh, take a little time, like, you know, to learn, like, you know, not like they compare with the other students. So we have to determine that. So according to uh, Bedrine and Mayer in 1987, uh, listed five primary sources of assessment in education, which support children with disabilities. Okay, so we can take screening and identification to screen children and identify those who may be experiencing delay or learning problem. I mean, like if there's a delay or whether they have any learning problem. So this is a screening and identification. So the other one is you can say eligibility and diagnosis. I mean, uh, you know, to determine whether a child has a disability and also eligible for special education services and also to diagnose the specific uh, nature of the student's problems or disability, like what is the problem and what is the disability, so kind of a thing. IEEP development placement, uh, well, uh, to provide de uh, detailed information so that an individualized education program that's called IEP may be developed and appropriate decisions may be made about the child's education and placement. The other one is the instructional planning. That's actually to develop and plan instruction appropriate to the child's special needs. It's accordingly, according to the child's special needs. Other thing is evaluation to evaluate learners progress. We have to evaluate whether the child is progressing or like whether improving or what is the drawback kind of a thing. Let's talk about how children are identified for disabilities assessment. Okay, uh, well, uh, firstly, the school suspect there's a presence of learning or behavior problem. So on the other hand, parents may also call or write to the school or to the directors of special education are required that the child be evaluated. So these kind of things will be happening. 
So what will happen is uh, if school personnel do not feel that the child has disabilities, they may refuse to assess the child. So uh, I mean like, uh, so they must inform the parents in writing as to their reasoning for refusing. I mean like uh, why they don't want to do it, like you have to inform the parents. So critical assessment users are helping students develop these skills will require changes in the way. Assessment done at school and classroom level as well as new approaches to large scale high stakes assessments. So changes in uh, assessment team uh, weaved as means of setting a more appropriate target for students, uh, focusing staff development effort efforts for teachers, encouraging curriculum change and improving instruction and uh, uh, instructional materials. Well, let's talk about the risk of assessing young children. Uh, well, when it comes to young children, uh, the, uh, uh, children are known to have difficulty in taking tests perhaps because they are sometimes confused by the way question asked. I mean, the way they, the question have been given, like it is a bit difficult, it is confused. So there is a reason to suggest that the young, uh, the age of the child being evaluated, the more errors they will make. Sometimes uh, they will make errors also when you evaluate in that uh, age because uh, uh, the child will not be uh, the confused with the question. So that's the reason. So uh, with the, uh, keeping in this mind, actually, uh, the risk of changing for labors to children also great as this would mean children would then have uh, live with the labor. So to, they have to live with the labor. So a uh, true or false, we don't know. So for a long time, which makes it more difficult to so discard. So therefore the teachers need to be aware of the potential errors of each evaluation or assessment strategy as it can help minimize errors in interpretation. So teachers have to be very careful. Like, uh, let's talk about misusers of test data. I mean, like, uh, when you come to test, test alone are not adequate tools for acc accountability. So learning and accurate information about education of children, like, uh, you know, cannot be fully determined uh, acumen test, actually. So therefore, uh, test data should not be used as evidence of the quality of the education. Uh, that children receive. So you cannot uh, take them as the quality of the education due to the results, uh, due to the evidence that the children receive. Uh, the public and professionals in education uh, alike share uh, a common mis misconception that test uh, scores are objective and scientific. Uh, this false assumption leads to re uh, reliance on test scores so making unjust decisions. So that's mean adjustment about children are made on faulty data rather than data which reflect each child's personal cause of development. So that's all for today. I think you enjoy this session and good luck with your studies and thank you.